Today we're going to look at the work of one of the most important psychologists of the 20th century, Carl Gustav Jung, and explore his ideas of the collective unconscious and archetypes, specifically focusing in on how we behave as individuals and where we need to focus as we work towards self actualization Jung previously worked with fellow psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, early in his career. However, the two later took different paths with the two unable to come to terms with each other's ideas, specifically in the case of Jung, who couldn't accept Freud's emphasis on the influence of biological factors, such as libido on behaviour and personality. As Jung focused deeper on understanding what constitutes to form the psyche of the individual, he came to the conclusion that within the psyche of our mind, the three main components are made up of the ego, personal unconscious and the collective unconscious. To give a very brief explanation, the ego is the conscious part of the mind we're aware of, comprised of emotions, thoughts and memories. The personal unconscious refers to the information in one's mind, but are memories that aren't available for conscious recall, for example something you've forgotten or repressed, but still influences your behaviour. The collective unconscious refers to structures of the unconscious mind which are shared amongst all people, and something we're all born with due to ancestral experience. It's in here that we start to understand more about Jung's archetypes, which are identifiable to all people. Archetypes themselves are innate, universal prototypes for ideas and may be used to interpret observations. In essence, they're kind of like character templates or images we can all understand and identify with. For example, Characters like a wise old man or a mother figure are common in myths and legends and are immediately understood as characters. The idea of the archetype came to Jung as he extensively studied myths and religious stories throughout history and found there were common themes and characters in them. From here, he built up his archetypal images, of which 12 have been attributed to him, for example the hero which we'll discuss later or the sage to name a couple. I think the idea of the hero archetype will be quite relatable and important to understand, so be sure to watch until the end to understand more about this. However, I want to first discuss the four major archetypes in all people to emerge in Jung's work, also known as the primordial images. Here, you'll discover aspects about your personality that help you grow and develop as an individual, allowing you in effect to be more true to yourself and act in a way in the world that's more fulfilling and compliant with who you are. So let's delve into the primordial images. The Persona Each of us have a persona, a version of ourselves that we portray to those around us. Jung said that the persona is a kind of mask designed on the one hand to make a definite impression upon others and on the other to conceal the true nature of the individual. In order to form social bonds and seek acceptance, we generally create a persona which is constructed from various archetypes formed in the collective unconscious. This can lead people to acting in ways that might be seen as stereotypical behaviour for their role. For example, Philip Zimbardo's study of social roles in a prison situation in 1971 demonstrated the effect that our role has on our persona, such as prison guards behaving as they would be expected to in their roles. However, as the persona is not a true reflection of our consciousness, but instead an idealised image which people aspire to, identifying too closely with a persona can lead to inner conflicts causing the result of losing our sense of individuality. The anima and animus The anima in males or the animus in females represent the opposite gender to a person's self. In life, as a person develops a gender identity, such as that of being male, they might repress aspects of their personality that could be considered feminine. Whilst these traits form part of the true, united or complete self, they are held back from our persona. We see this commonly, for example in adolescent boys who behave as what they perceive as masculine behaviour when around peers to try and gain acceptance. 
However, the anima and animus are idealized impressions of the male or the female, and emerge from the collective unconscious in dreams and inform our ideas of the opposite gender. It's through growth and maturity we often see the need to accept the anima or animus into our lives. For example, in my case, as I grow older and continue to mature in life, I find I'm less likely to repress my anima, or feminine side, to show compassion and empathy towards others. The Shadow The shadow archetype, something I've previously covered on the channel, is composed mostly of the aspects of ourselves that we might consider to be negative, or at least have a negative perception of. The shadow can be something we don't want to integrate as part of the outward persona, but is necessary to do according to Jung. Jordan Peterson has explained the idea of the shadow quite well in the past, as he essentially describes it as being a monster to deal with situations in a more effective manner. As if the shadow isn't integrated as part of the individual, it may still manifest itself in life and would be left uncontrolled. For example, parents sometimes need to embrace their shadows when disciplining children, as otherwise, if left uncontrolled, could manifest itself in the form of abuse. The Self It's through understanding Jungian archetypes and integrating them through a process called individuation that we develop ourselves as individuals. The self is often represented by the wise man or woman archetype, as people grow and mature and come to understand how to integrate themselves into society without internal conflicts, but rather to encompass seemingly opposing concepts in harmony with one another. The self is an archetype that represents the unified unconsciousness and consciousness of an individual, coming to be the realization of the whole, rather than only specific aspects of the individual or the archetypes they think they need to portray for acceptance. As Jung himself said of the self, it might equally be called the god within us. The Hero I mentioned earlier I wanted to also briefly discuss the archetype of the hero in this video, not least because I think it's one that many of you watching may be able to relate with in your journeys. Of the hero, Jung wrote that the hero's main feat is to overcome the monster of darkness. It is the long hoped for and expected triumph of consciousness over the unconscious. Now, the first part of the statement to overcome the monster of darkness is something we all really want to do, right? We want to go out into the world and achieve success, which is the destination we seek as we try to overcome obstacles we're faced with. It's the idea of the knight saving the princess from the dragon. However, delve deeper and you see the second part of the statement is conflictive with what we've previously discussed. We've said that we need to unify the conscious and unconscious to identify the self. Yet Jung's description of the hero is the triumph of consciousness over the unconscious. In our lives, we have a tendency to look up to hero figures in films and other media, and while there are lessons in nobility and virtue to take from them, in reality, as we mature, it's important to let the hero archetype die, as in doing so will mean to accept the reality of ourselves, good and bad. It's why we've seen a popularity in fraud heroes and anti-heroes in modern times, as people have matured and understand that the flaws cannot be denied, but rather need to be integrated and accepted. I think this is no more noticeable than in the change of popularity of Batman and Superman. For many kids in the 40s through to the end of the 60s, Superman was a more popular character, but as many children matured, their interest and acceptance of Batman grew especially in the 70s and 80s when Batman's character explored darker themes and was seen to be a hero of depth and character, one that was more relatable. It's here in understanding what makes up the self that we learn an important lesson. As you seek to achieve your goals in life, something we talk a lot about on the channel, we can't just take on the role of the hero archetype that slays the dragon but rather we need to come to learn and accept ourselves fully as we go through a process to do so. This means showing a true reflection of our consciousness, it means embracing the anima and animus, it means confronting and integrating the shadow, all to achieve the self. 
It's when you do this that you truly become the hero in your journey. Were you aware of Jung's concept of archetypes? Let me know in the comments section below. Please like, share and subscribe as we help you live life on your terms. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads. Thanks for watching.